Well, happy Wednesday. I'm on early. I've got a meeting at 9.30 today, so I want to jump on early and continue our study on the Hall of Fame or the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11. So why don't you go ahead, grab your Bible, be in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. As you turn there, remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. <clears throat> We are looking at different people through the Old Testament who showed us what it was like to have faith. So let's do a quick review as you find Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. Abel was a man that we learned to approach God by his standards, just like we need to approach the White House. Enoch walked in obedience, and then he also had faith in God. Abraham was willing to follow God, even though he did not know the destination. Sarah had faith in God's promise, even when the situation seemed impossible. Remember, she was 90 whenever she was pregnant. Isaac, his faith was uh, leading to blessing when repentance was involved because he had a lot of conflict. And then finally, yesterday, we looked at Jacob, and Jacob worshiped God even when you don't see the promises fulfilled. So we have quite a list of people that showed us that faith isn't always easy. And today, we're going to look at the life of Moses. So by now, you should be in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. You know, life isn't easy. <clears throat> life could be easy, and it would be easy until we have to sacrifice something we want or desire. Then life choices are not so easy. But that's where faith comes in. And today we're looking at the life of Moses because Moses had a life that was very easy until he stepped out in faith and decided to trust in, in God's promises. And that's going to be the challenge that we're going to see today. So we're in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 through 30, the life of Moses. Really what we're doing is we're going to cover the book of Exodus in the next five minutes. So put on your quick ears and it's going to be a review. And hopefully if you have some questions, it will either drive you to God's word or you can reach out if, uh, if this brings and services some questions. See, Moses' faith is an example of sacrificial faith. Moses would turn his back to worldly pleasures for the promises God gave his ancestor Abraham. <clears throat> How do we get there? Let's go back and do a quick review. Remember, uh, Joseph and his family were in Egypt because of the famine, and Joseph was in second in command. Ex Exodus chapter 1 tells us that the, that Pharaoh passed away, and a new Pharaoh came in, and he didn't know the history of the Israelites and what Joseph did and who Jacob was. And so he looked around, and he saw that the Hebrews were continuing to grow in number. They were having lots of babies. And then if they would have a revolt, there was more Hebrews than there were Egyptians, and the Pharaoh lived in fear. So the Pharaoh, as a result, put a bounty on all the Hebrew babies' boys' heads. And Moses was born during this time, and he was about three months old when his parents put him in the Nile River. His parents, they had faith that God would protect their baby boy and that he would keep him safe. So Pharaoh's daughter was in the river and she was taking a bath and this basket floated in or she found this basket and she opened it up and there was a Hebrew baby boy. Jewish tradition says that or believes and we're not sure we say Jewish tradition, so it's not scriptural. It's more of a theory is we the Jewish tradition believes or has a theory that the daughter of Pharaoh was the only child of Pharaoh and then she was childless. So this single child, the daughter of Pharaoh, who had no children, was therefore adopted the Hebrew baby. So Moses was the heir to the throne of Egypt. And so one day Moses gave it all up. When he was 40, he decided he wanted to protect his Hebrew people by killing an Egyptian soldier. Now, Moses didn't go about this in the right way. It's never right to kill someone. And Moses took matters into his own hands. Instead of using the power and influence he had, he went and took and did things his own way. But oftentimes, whenever we try to do things our own way, God can use what man meant for evil, God can use for good. And I just want to pause here. It's so refreshing for me to see and read the, the Old Testament stories and realize that all these folks, they all had faults. They were not perfect. And it's a good reminder that we only worship one perfect person, and his name is Jesus Christ. 
All right, let's go back to Moses. Moses, because he he killed this Egyptian soldier, the Pharaoh found out, and Moses had to flee into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, God reaffirmed the promises to Moses. And then he called Moses to free the Israelites. He said, Moses, you're going to let my people, help me get my people free. So Moses' faith looked more to wisdom to God than the strength of men because Moses is seeing all that has happened. He's seeing all the oppression of the Israelites and Moses has faith. He has trust in the promises of God. And so Moses comes back and admits the 10 plagues that we see in different movies that the final plague is the 10th plague and that's the plague of death. And the angel of death would come and the firstborn would be taken away unless they would have the blood on the frame of the door. And so by faith, Moses led the people to do that blood sacrifice and to put it on the doorway and the angel of death passed over. If you read through the story of Moses and the life of Moses, you're going to see example of faith after faith after faith after faith. And then Moses led his people out of Egypt and he led them through the wilderness where the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud led them. And then Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that the people of Israel demonstrated faith when they walked through the Red Sea when it was parted and the waters were surrounding them, but they took their level of faith to the next step and they put their faith in the trust and promises of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is never easy. And don't ever let someone tell you that faith is easy. It's not. But many times when we exercise faith, it causes us to grow in our knowledge of God, our trust in God. But also as we walk in faith, it also causes us to sacrifice something. When we look at the life of Moses, Moses sacrificed a life in the palace, a life of luxury, a life of people serving him. Because Moses believed in the promises of God, Moses was willing to sacrifice all of that to have faith in the promises of God. How about you? How about me? What are you willing to sacrifice so that your faith in God will grow? Is your faith a faith that is choosing, the, I'm sorry, that is challenging you? to sacrifice or is it allowing you to remain the same you see moses's faith was a faith of challenge and it was a faith of sacrifice where it wouldn't allow him to stay where he was at because he believed in the promises of god moses's faith challenged him to sacrifice an easy life for a life of continual trusting in god's provision and in god's deliverance as you think about your faith in the Lord this morning on this Wednesday morning, how about your faith in God? Is your faith a sacrificial faith where you continue to be challenged by God and continue to grow in your trust in God and his provision and his leading and guiding? Or is your faith allowing you to sit back and live a life of luxury? It's a great question that we need to challenge ourselves with as we look at the life of Moses. What a great reminder for us this morning of the faith that sacrifices, a sacrificial faith to trust in the promises of God. If I can help you in any way, I trust you'll reach out and I hope you have a great Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow morning, hopefully back at the same time at 930. Have a great day.